Welcome to Plus INT, where we'll level up your knowledge of gaming and geekery. I'm Preston. I'm Georgia. And I'm Ernie. And we're here to tell you about news. The first news story I want to talk about this week, um, they've released a new Pokédex app for the iOS which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, it's going to have the first original 150 Pokemon. Um, it's a Japan-only exclusive at this point, unfortunately, but it's still pretty neat. Uh, it's about $2 for the app, and then you can get four add-on exclusives for the other Pokemon that are 6 bucks each. And uh, I just think that's a really cool story that I want to share with you guys. It's interesting to note that this isn't the first Pokemon game on the iOS. Uh, before there's that tapping game that was released only in Japan, and it's with the, the trading card game. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's the only reason that these games aren't released in the United States is because of copyright issues. Well, I hope it gets a U.S. release, and I, I bet it would be successful, because I know, like, when I was a kid, I wanted a Pokédex. Well, what I think is kind of interesting is that it is actually going to be in competition with the uh, 3DS app for the Pokémon. Uh, I mean, for the Pokédex, and uh, I'm kind of curious to see whether or not, you know, the iOS version sells better. Of course, Nintendo is not going to release that kind of information to the public, but it would still be interesting to know. Um, last week, we got our first screenshot for Dragon Age 3. This is the first confirmation of the existence of this game. Before this, we've never seen any footage of the game just talking about how the game is going to work. Uh, so we saw this screenshot at Faster Animation Festival. Founder of Valve and creator of the Half-Life series, Gabe Newell, is getting inducted into the Video Game Hall of Fame. His achievements include creating Valve, the game company, which has produced such series as Portal, uh, Half-Life, and Left 4 Dead, and uh, creation of Steam, the digital distribution platform which has been extremely successful in keeping the PC gaming market alive. The other news story I kind of wanted to talk about is uh, Texas Instruments just laid off a ton of workers, um, 1,700. Um, they have historically been working on like microchips and they think that they may have to switch up their whole business model because a lot of their customers, like Apple and Samsung, are making their own stuff. And I don't know, it's it's really sad on one hand because I feel like a lot of these companies, you know, are losing a ton of people. But at the same time, it's kind of the march of technology. I'm not sure what they can do about that. Not a whole lot that can be done if, if people aren't buying their microchips. This isn't exclusive Texas Instruments, though. We're seeing Sony over in Japan losing all their customers. Mm -hmm. uh, small stores over in Japan don't even sell so many stuff anymore. Uh, their, their expo centers are even empty. Yeah, I was gonna say, I read a story a couple weeks ago about Sony and it's like, it's crazy because Sony is such a big company, especially, you know, you think about like all these Sony products, but they're tanking right now. They used to be, a few decades ago, the, the image of success in Japan mm -hmm. and now they're just gone. March of progress, I guess. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Although, um, I would add, Texas Instruments is still working on, uh, you know, like for co uh, companies that do work for them, they are still doing stuff for Kindle Fire, and there have been some rumors that Amazon may buy them up, but I think that's unconfirmed at this point, so. As long as they're still around, bored high school students can program games into their calculators for many years to come. Mega Man 3. <laughs> you can do that? Yeah, you can. I didn't know that. <laughs> I had a crappy Mario clone. <laughs> So this month is Xbox Live's 10th anniversary, and aside from giving them out a lot of things, they're releasing some facts about their services. For example, there is 100 million friendships being done currently at this moment, and uh, there is 14.5 billion worth of achievements unlocked up to this point. And so much time wasted. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Playing games is a really productive use of your time. We're doing a <laughs> video on video games. That's a good point. No, that's actually really cool though. I mean. I think sometimes uh, people talk about video games like in this really dismissive way, as in like it doesn't keep you connected to people and stuff like that, but you know, a lot of the best friendships I've ever made are with fellow gamers, or it's like, hey, you're into this thing? Like, I am too, and it's like, a lot of my friends are people that I game with online or offline, and I just think that's really cool. I think that's kind of proof that maybe the stereotype isn't true. And uh, on the 10-year ten, ten thing, uh, people that have been with Xbox Live for the whole segment of 10 years. I have seen screenshots. Uh, Microsoft is sending out these 10 year anniversary edition Xboxes. Uh, I think the coolest thing about this is that people have been paying the yearly membership price for <laughs> Xbox Live for the past 10 years when there's a PS3 there that's completely free network services. Yeah, I was going to so. say, I don't. Uh, I mean, I'm not an Xbox person, I'm a PS3, but that's also because I'm kind of cheap. <laughs> <laughs> It's still really cool. Hey, um, Xbox Live services are better, for yeah. sure, but they are also 
uh, $60 more expensive mm -hmm. per year. Well, they're, they're any number more expensive because you have to pay for it, but yeah. I haven't had any personal experience with the PSN, but the PSN did get hacked and people's credit card uh -huh. details did get leaked. Yeah, and I mean... Well, no, it didn't because I got hacked and um, I didn't lose it. Well, like, not everyone, but I well, heard... Well, yeah, but that, a lot of people did. A lot of I people mean, did. And, but yeah. Honestly, what I've always said is that the decision on PS3 versus S Xbox basically comes down to which games do you want to play. Exactly. If you want to play, like, Uncharted and Infamous, which are both... Uh, I have I can't speak on Uncharted, but I have played Infamous, and it's really fun. If you want to play either of those games, they're PS3 exclusive. But if you want to play, like... Halo, I guess. I'm having trouble pulling some Xbox exclusives off the top of my head. I've been in the PC gaming arena too long. Right. And I mean, I think it also depends on the kind of gamer you are. Like, I, I do have a lot of friends that I've met online through gaming, but at the same time, I dread the thought of, like, joining a game. I mean, we all know, like, kind of 12 and 13 year old brats that game and are terrible to people. And I'm like, I don't need that in my life. You know, frankly, I don't. I'm like, I don't need to deal with 12-year-olds and their problems and their horrible language and the way they are terrible people. Actually, I met these 8-year-old <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, ones. they're kids. I know a lot of them aren't awful, but... <laughs> I met an 8-year-old one playing Little Big Planet, and it was, like, the cutest Aww. thing ever. Because it was during the summer, and, like, his parents were getting divorced. Oh, no! And then I just talked to him through the whole time, and it was... Oh. It, it was an experience. It was sad, though. <laughs> <laughs> and on Xbox Live, you go and people call you horrible slurs. So, I mean, but it can yeah. be mixed. I mean, I have met amazing people, but at the same time, uh, at this point in my life, I'm like, I'd rather not risk dealing with... <laughs> Xbox Live is like a... getting their parents divorced. No. Bethesda, creator of the Elder Scrolls series, has released details on an upcoming downloadable content expansion for Skyrim entitled Dragonborn, which will include, among other features, a return to the continent and region of Morrowind, specifically the island of Solstheim, and riding dragons. Oh, well, that's awesome. I like. I'm not even into Skyrim. I'm afraid of becoming one of those Skyrim addicts that you hear about. But uh, I still like. I really want to give the game a shot. But at the same time, I know it's gonna swallow my life whole. This might be uh, what makes me do it though. It's good to keep adding new content to the game, even though it's full of mods already. This is one of the best uh, and most open source games we've seen for a while. So uh, to see even more content being brought into the game is really, it's really interesting. Oh man, thinking of uh, mods to Skyrim, again, I don't play it, but some of them are just amazing to me. Like, we mentioned I watch My Little Pony. Like, there's one that turns, like, all the dragons into ponies, which is amazing to me. <laughs> I'm like, I want to play that version of the game. Well, at the Homestuck, there's, uh... <laughs> 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 Apparently you don't want to play it? I don't. I don't <laughs> ponies. I don't ponies. But come on, they're giant, flying, adorable ponies. Well, come the dragons on. are kind of easy to kill. Well, I... <laughs> Even though it's still a full $60 price point on PC, I'm considering picking it up just so that I can go back and run around in Morrowind because they've got, they've got the old architecture and the old monsters and I've, I sunk so much time into playing uh, Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Oh. <laughs>
I just thought it was really interesting. Like, I mean, it, it's just crazy, like, the lives these guys have to live, like, how they just have to give up everything to work on these games. And it's like, you see it especially with the guy who made Fez, because he doesn't know, like, if it's gonna succeed, and it's just like, you use these years and years and years working on something, and just, I don't know, I think it's really fascinating. Like, even if you're not into games, I think a lot of people can kind of relate to that. It's a risky business, but I think the payoff can be definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow these people after you watch the documentary, uh, John Blow is currently working on this game called Witness, and he's currently blogging about everything he does. So if you want to look that up, that'd be great. Um, speaking of uh, following, uh, you can follow us at uh, on Facebook and also at the underscore Prairie on Twitter. Um, and please comment below, let us know what you thought of this episode, what you'd like to see in the future. Um, we're also doing a holiday hashtag uh, project. Please send your no filter uh, photos to us on Instagram. That'd be great. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it for this week. See you on the podcast later.